Welcome back guys, this is the Painting Wookie and this is Warhammer Imperium Vlog episode 12. In this episode we look at issue 12 and with issue 12 we get three new paints. We get our first shade, Agrathair shade, first layer, Canoptic Alloy and a new paint, Screamer Pink. This issue is only, it's a issue, it's a paint uh, only issue so there's no, there's no minis. Uh, and we're going to be painting, uh, adding paint to the miniatures we already have from previous issues. So why don't we dive in and have a look. In this issue we look at Necron Weapons and Wargear names. Uh, these will be given, uh, so we'll get the uh, named table generators for the Necros, similar to the Space Marines. Uh, we'll do look, be looking at the Imperial Nihilus chapter planets and Chaos Demons for our lore. And as I said, it's a paint only issue, so we'll be painting Space Marines and Necrons with our new paints. And we'll be looking at the playthrough 12, Defending the Crypts. Okay, so let's go and dive into it. Necrons, Weapon and Wargear names. The weapons and wargear of the Necron race are as technologically advanced as they are incredibly ancient. These devices are created, maintained and powered by the eldritch science of the Necrons cryptic engineers. And their names reflect the incredible power they possess. All Necron dynasties possess vast crypt complexes filled with technological wonders ranging from defences, dispersion shields and destructive disruption fields to arcane devices known as chronometrons, which can bend and shape the very passage of time. And as I said, we look at getting the uh, generator table here for, for this. The superiority of our technology is self-evident. Our dynasties possess weapons that have slain the greatest of our foes, both mortal and divine. The names of these weapons are spoken of in hushed tones. Void Reaper, whose blade tears the souls of its victims from their bodies. The Voltic Staff, which can wreathe a mortal in lightning and sear flesh from bone. What hope have the lesser races in the face of our matchless artifices? Salkar Cryptic of an Anni-like dynasty. So, like the uh, Space Marines, uh, we get for our war gear, our range weapon and our melee weapon, a D33 generate, name generator table. Okay, uh, and we'll be using this going forward to name uh, all weapons, uh, all weapons and war gear for the Necrons. Okay, uh, on to law. The Imperial Nihilus. The Imperial Nihilus lies beyond the rolling warp storms that make up the Great Rift. Cut off from terror and blind to the Astronomicon's light, those who dwell here face a legion of nightmarish foes. Warsome villagers, Nackman the Wantulit, Inquisitor Garion Val. The situation in the Imperial Nihilus is far worse than we had imagined. Sinus and heretic forces stalk the Nackman Wantulit in their droves, and Vigilus remains under assault. Beyond the gauntlet, communication between worlds have proven almost impossible. Without the light of the Astronomicon, our navigators can only plot short warp jumps, rendering warp travel both dangerous and slow. We must hope that those lost in the darkness retain both faith and hatred, for aid shall not arrive soon. So it's quite good because um, it's following 9th edition for Kill Team and for uh, Warhammer 40,000 enactment is the new Kill Team box set. So. Uh, never before have I encountered such unbridled heresy. The clothing stench of chaos pervades the immaterial and embolds the heretic. I have overseen the purge of a dozen worlds, yet still more traitors rise from the shadows. The work of the Inquisition shall never be complete. Inquisitor Gregorina Praxia Ordo Hereticus. Commander Dante is the chapter master of the Blood Angel Space Marine chapter. The Blood Angels chapter planet Val lies in the Imperial Nihilus. Named regent of the Imperial Nihilus by Rebuke Killiman, Dante is now responsible for commanding all Imperial forces in the region of the galaxy. He has sworn to pur the purge the Imperial Nihilus of chaos. Many Space Marine chapters operate from a single home world, where they carry out their training, recruit new warriors and rearm their forces. It is their sovereign domain over which they have complete authority and their chapter master is lord of all. Fleet based chapters that utilize a vast fleet of starships as the center of operations. Fleet based chapters have no home worlds to speak of and are largely nomadic in nature. Crossing the galaxy aboard strike crews, battle barges, warp capable star fortresses and other gigantic vessels. So um, things like kind of Black Templars, Lamenters and Blood Ravens are kind of fleet based chapters but they've never had a home world per se, but uh, for example the Dark Angels, Caliban, got destroyed uh, and now they kind of basically go in the rock which is a kind of 
uh, big massive uh, starship. Um, I can't remember what exactly type it is, but um, yeah, it had big massive rockers and stuff like that. So that, this is what that is. Um, and then fortress monasteries are gigantic citadels where the Space Marines headquarters are Chaos Demons. No enemy of the Imperium is more terrible than the Demons of Chaos. They are the numberless foot soldiers of the Dark Gods. Rolled from the very essence of the Immaterium, their monstrous forms are shaped by the darkest nightmares and cruelest desires of mortal beings. The Chaos Gods. Korn is the Blood God. Chaos God of anger, violence and hatred. His demons are dead-skinned monsters clutching half-forged blades who seek only to conquer and destroy all in their path. Nurgle is the Chaos God of Plague and Decay. His demons are bloated with rot and covered in pus-filled boils. Most are jovial creatures who take pleasure in spreading disease across the galaxy. Sench is the Chaos God of Change. An ever-scheming ever scheming god, he is associated with sorcery. His brightly coloured demons go to war with vibrant, destructive displays of magic. Slanesh is the Chaos God of Pain, Pleasure and Excess. He is the youngest of the Chaos Gods. His demons are both beautiful and horrific, with lithe, graceful bodies made by monstrous mutations. To read the Emperor's Tarot is to foresee the fate of worlds. The cards of the Dark Gods herald their foul corruption. Should such a card be turned, we of the Inquisition must be vigilant. Where the ruinous powers stir, heresy is surely afoot. Inquisitor Rodrigo Pike. A thousand chapters. There may be as many as a thousand space marine chapters in the known galaxy. Some were born of the first founding, and they have a history that goes back 10,000 years. Others are newly founded, all serve the Emperor and fight his wars with unquestionably in questioning loyalty. So this pop-up is all about the chapters, the founding. So for example, we have Imperial Fists, which is one of the original legions uh, that got split uh, and then the four Black Templars. I think there's a bit of a history, Black Templars, Imperial Fists, Black Templars don't take psychers. Uh, there's a, a weird reason I can't remember. Uh, leave it in the comment if you know, so I can I know that, that yeah. Uh, but I would love to have a Black Templars uh, army. So uh, we also look at the White Scars and Blood Angels are also kind of some of the First Legions and we have uh, Space Wolves and Dark Angels, also for one of the initial legions and in fact they are, they, they, they basically hate each other for some reason. Um, and then we have a bit more about uh, the Adeptus and Starters of, of War fleet based chapters and chapter planets. Uh, I'm not going to go through everything, I, I'm going to read it anyway as I go along. Um, and yeah, and then obviously, obviously as well we've got a bit of a map as well here that tells us where everybody is. Uh, so we are looking at right now, we are, where are we? This part here, so this is the Imperius Nihilus. And uh, we have like Blood Angels, we've got the Silver uh, silver uh, Skulls, um, a few other chapters, probably second founding. Um, let me see if I can find, uh, we've got here the Black Templars over here, uh, Malefactors. And I think there is, I can't see which one I'm looking for. Honestly, the ones that I'm looking for, so anyways, um, but yeah, that's it. Okay, anyways, on to painting now.
action. Defending the crypts, the Necron Overlord, Unka the Destroyer, conqueror of the unworthy hunter of vermin, right hand of the Trag, Bane of the Swarm, has risen from his slumber and gained control of his forces. However, his crypt complex remains under siege. He accompanies his phalanx of Necron warriors, the Solar Stalkers, as they stalk the corridors, hunting down the intruders. Mission Briefing. A group of assault intercessors, Squad Ignis, find themselves caught in the path of the Necron Overlord Unka the Destroyer and his phalanx of warriors, the Solar Stalkers. Thankfully, their captain, Rasmus Cirrus, stands at their side. The skirmish will pit the Necron's eldritch technology against the assault intercessors' aggression and the captain's talent for leadership. Hunt the intruders, annihilate the space marines. The Necron Overlord Unka the Destroyer finds its conquest of Megaria under threat. If it is to bring glory to the Sarakan, it must destroy the impertinent space marines. Destroy the Overlord. Target of opportunity. The presence of the Necron Overlord Anka the Destroy presents an opportunity. The Captain Rasmus Cirrus and his forces must overpower and destroy the enemy commander. In this battle or playthrough, uh, we got a new um, keyword, and that is the keyword character. So. Uh, basically, oh, we learn about keywords. Uh, units have keywords on their datasheet. These keywords appear in bold at the bottom of the datasheet and when referred to it in the rules, it is the character keyword shown in bold on the Necron Overlord Primary Captain. Uh, referred to in the rules, yeah. So if a rule specifies that it applies to a model or unit with a keyword, it only applies to a model or unit that matches that keyword, i.e. has it on, uh, has it on its datasheet. Uh, and for this we've got the look at Sir rule which says that models cannot shoot at a character while it is within three inches of a friendly unit of three or more models, unless the character is the closest target. Basically, so datasheet we do get for the primaries um, a four plus invul save, and we've got a Mastercrafter Power Sword, Plasma Pistol, Salt Intercessors, Chainsaws, and Heavy Bolt Pistols. Necro Overlord has the Void Scythe, Living Metal. Uh, and it's the character model, and then <clears throat> the Necro Warriors have the Gauss Flares, uh, even the, these ones that have the Reapers, the, uh, I'm going to play them as if they had Gauss Flares. Okay, so it is the mission is basically a all out war, whoever survives wins, and there's no limit on turn. Who gets first? Two gets first, and um, well, we got a 12 inch. Uh, they can target that, and um, I am gonna move my assault intercessors uh, six inches. Okay, so they are gonna move uh, six inches there, there, and there. And I am going to place my. I'm going to place my captain. I'm gonna place my captain over to this flank. So. Uh, I'm only kind of just five inches there, just so that he's not targeted by anybody and he's like not the closest target. So let's do our uh, assault intercessors first. So we got uh, three pistols. So yes, yeah, so I can't target. I can't target it. Uh, so I need to target them, and it is. Three plus, three pistols, three plus, all hit, and that is just strength, strength four versus toughness four. That is a four plus, and only go one goes through, and it, and it's a minus one on the AP. Uh, minus one on the AP, uh, so that is a five plus save for the Necrons and fails, so that means one dies. I'm just going to get the one uh, there, uh, and we're going to go for our plasma pistol for the captain, also 12 inch, so um, he is within range. Yeah, so he's within range, and that is one dies, uh, two plus. Goes in, strength seven versus toughness four, so that is that is three plus. Um, repeat that. 
3 plus goes and hit and it's a minus 3 AP so that is a 7 that is basically dead automatic dead so that is another Necron dead and we are now on the assault we've got another rule which is hero intervention when the player whose turn it is has charged with all eligible units the opponent may select an eligible character unit from their army to perform a heroic intervention the character must not be within engagement range of an enemy unit and must be within three inches of an enemy unit move the character model up to three inches the character model must finish it to heroic intervention move closer to the closest enemy model i can charge i'm not sure if i can charge that. I'm, we're going to play the the necron overload can't be charged so i'm going to charge the uh, necron warriors uh, and the reason for it is that that we keep it consistent so uh, but i think you sh would be able to charge so that is two dice and um, we need at least a six to six inches. so yeah they, they go in uh, so he pulls in and uh, that is ten ten inches yep pulls in pulls in and pulls in so they have gone in now so i am going to charge with also my captain so because they are charged i'm going to charge my captain into the overlord and uh, so that is at least a nine and he gets in so no heroic intervention for you so uh yeah so not been yet so it can't be within engagement range so yeah the heroic intervention is done done for so let's see let's do the assault intercessors first so that is again like bef like a last video or last kind of playthrough we have three attacks for the chainsaw and that is a three plus uh, one more no only one goes through all right so one goes through and that is strength four versus toughness four. That is four plus and nothing. Um, that is the Gauss, so yeah, the Necron Warrior. So we got three attacks and two go through. <laughs> and we have strength four versus toughness four, so that is four plus and one goes through no ap so he's basically grabbed their kind of you know gauss reapers and just knock the hell out of their sort of intercessors so we have a three plus save and he saves it <clears throat> now it's time for the captain so the captain has uh, a melee user plus one <clears throat> and that's the crafted power sword so he has five wounds I'm going to play him as he has five wounds, okay? So that is five dice. Two, three, four, five. Five dice. And that is two plus. All bar one. Um, all bar one. And that is use plus one. So that is five strength versus five ton toughness. So that is four plus. <coughs> So basically, he swung his sword, and the Necron Overlord has just gone, yeah, go try and hit me, blah, 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 and it's just too fast, and he's missed. Basically, missed. That is rubbish. Okay, it's, uh, for the Necron Overlord, the voice scythe, we have each time an attack is made with this weapon, subtract one from the attack's hit roll. Okay, so we've got four attacks. Uh, two plus, but we subtract one from the hit roll, so that means three plus. Two go through, and it's two plus because it's user times two, though, so that is strength ten versus toughness four. Alright, so that is two plus. And one goes through, and it's minus one on, no, sorry, minus four AP, so the captain goes for his iron halo so that is a four plus invuln save and he has to make it because if not it's a d3 damage 
and he makes it. Oh my goodness. Okay, it gets interesting. This. Okay, it's getting interesting. Um. So. Nice. Uh, okay. Okay. So. Uh. It's Necron's turn now. And. <clears throat> so what shall we go first? Um. Shall we just do? We'll do the Necron Overlord. Okay. So that uh, because we've already done that. So let's carry on. Necron Overlord and move that way so that is <coughs> four attacks, <coughs> two, three plus, all hit and it's two plus. Woohoo! Nothing hits, nothing wounds. So again, like the uh, captain, the Overlord has swung his side and the captain has done and done bugger all. Captain's turn, five attacks and two plus. And all power one, so that's four attacks goes th goes through, and we got strength seven, no strength uh, five versus toughness five, so that is four plus, and three go through, three go through minus three AP, so that is six plus. So you got to get a, three, a six plus. If not, he's he's done for. Okay. Two wounds go through, and each of these wounds is a. Uh, each of these die, sorry, it's two wounds each. So that means that is four wounds. The Necro Overlord has five wounds. He's left with one wound. Okay, so we have one wound on the Necro Overlord. <coughs> Necro Warriors. Three dice. Three dice uh, hitting on a three plus. All go through toughness, strength four versus toughness four, so that is four plus. One goes through, no AP, so it's three plus on the save, and they make it. Sort of intercessors, that is three attacks on a three plus. Two go through, and it's uh, strength four, toughness four, so that is four plus. And one goes through AP minus one, that is five plus. And no, no. Uh, so another Necron is dead. And we're just gonna go and pile in there. And that is end of Necron's turn. Now, it's the turn of the turn of uh, Space Marines. Uh, we are going to gonna go for the Overlord first. So Captain, uh, Captain goes first. So we are five attacks, two plus. Okay, that's four attacks. So and it's um, five five. So that is uh, four plus. Okay, only one goes through. One goes through, and we are looking at AP minus three, a six plus. Whoa, and he saves it. Oh, this is crucial. He saved it. So now we are going for the assault and successes. Uh, three plus, three attacks, three plus, three go through, and it's uh, four plus. Only one goes through AP minus one, so that is five plus. And he fails it, so another Necron bites the dust. Um, we're just gonna go there like that, and they're surrounding him. Yeah! Arrgh. Okay, Necron's turn. Overlord gains one wound, so that is now he's up to two wounds. Up to two wounds there, and um, I'm gonna do the, the Necron Warrior first. So, uh, three plus goes through, four plus, and nothing. And now it's the void side of the Overlord. Uh, no, sorry, it's uh, Salt Intercessors first. So, that is three, yeah, three die. Three plus, only two go through. Um, four plus, 
only one goes through and that is a five plus for the Necron Warrior and nothing so Necron dead um, and they can pile in over here uh, if I'm not mistaken oh, uh, six inches um, it's the Overlord sorry so that is four attacks on a Two plus. Three go through, and it's two plus to hit because it's ten versus four. Whoa, okay, so that is three go through minus four, so it's a uh, three go through, four plus involve save, and he's filled two. One goes through, and it's three damage. Three damage, so that is he's left with three wounds. He's left with three wounds. Okay, um, and it's his turn to go. So that is two, four, five. Five attacks. Five attacks. Um, two plus. Only three go through, and that is four plus. Only one goes through, so one, uh, and that is minus three, six plus, six plus, and he saves it. Okay, crucial because he's still alive. So that, um, uh, so that means Space Marine's turn. Um, okay, let's go with. Our five attacks for the captain. Uh, so all hit, all hit, and it's four plus, and only three go through, and that is a six plus for the save, isn't it? Yes, six plus one if the AP. And whoa, okay, all hit, and yeah, unfortunately, that is two apiece. Necron Overlord dies. Necron Overlord dies, and, and we have a victory for the Space Marine. So, issue 12 done. Only paint issue, so we had to look at painting our fair shade. So, we got our Argus Air Shade, and as you can see, I don't know how to use a shade. Uh, we you, it, it, I mean, it gave us very little places to put it on, okay? Uh, so, yeah, Agatha it will be used more. Uh, still haven't used that um, dry brush from issue 11, but I'm expecting to use it, I don't know, uh, in the next issue, okay? All in all, uh, nice issue to go through. Um, it was law heavy. It was law heavy. So we learned about the the, the Imperial Nihilers, uh, who's the regent there, um, chapter planets, and a bit about my favourite chapter of Space Marines, Dark Angels, which is a fleet based chapter, uh, Fortress of Monastery and Chaos Demons. Um, uh, yeah, a bit obviously heavy, a bit more heavy, or kind of a bit more law this time because it was only painting. Uh, playthrough. Nice playthrough. Um, uh, not much in terms of what we learned. Um, I mean, just kind of going over what we've learned up to now. Okay, so the psychic, uh, not the psychic, fed, move, shoot. Um, we they did introduce character, so kind of a character keyword. So you can't shoot a character if he's not the closest um, model. Um, one thing I will say uh, for the assault intercessors, I have been using them as each one has one attack. Okay, in reality, each one has three attacks. Okay, but I would have thought that would be unfair. Uh, I think going forward, I might do it properly. So, the two base attacks plus the one for the chain sword. Okay, um, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, anyway. Uh, yeah, a great issue, a great issue. Um, I'm kind of liking it how they kind of are putting it bit by bit, okay? So, leave it at that. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, 
like the video and um, it will help a lot i will be eternally grateful and uh, share it with people uh, bring more people in the more people the more subscribers the better obviously um i do this for free i'm not paid for to do all this so uh yeah it will help me um help you i don't know anyway leave it at that i'm the painter wookie uh and i'll see you next time bye bye